This is the Zoom 98, Maldrick's full-size stick on the Zoom lineup. And I brought it to the Grand Lasson, the biggest keyboard meetup in the world. But more on that later. I'll let you know my thoughts, how it sounds and feels, and more right after this intro. Before anything else, Meltrix did send this early unit out for review, but that will not affect any opinions I have on this product. They are watching this video at the same time as you do. So without further ado, let's get into the package. This is a review unit, so the final package might be different to you. In my case, I got all the modules for the 2U on top as well as the external weight out of the box. But moving on over the box of accessories, we are greeted with the Meltrix box which is magnetically latched and has a very nice artwork printed on it. Inside, you got the plate of your choice, polycarbonate being the default, the various foams optional for the build such as the case, plate, and PE foams, the WS3.1 stabs, the 5-pin Hatswap PCB with flex cuts, as well as the 2.4GHz dongle included in the kit. Besides this, you get the heaps of accessories and tools needed for the build, such as the gaskets, screws, and allen key, as well as the coiled cable, standard with every zoom. Now, the star of the show, covered in a nice microfiber cloth, is the Zoom 98EE itself. I got the yellow one, and it looks so vibrant and well put together. We'll discuss the build later. For now, let's get to know more about the Zoom 98 and various finishes and options. The Zoom 98 redefines the almost full-size 98 key layout with some tiny modifications to make it a column shorter than the standard 108 key ANSI layout. Gone are the page up and page down keys on the knob cluster. The top, print scroll and pause keys are replaced with a modular 2U area which can house an LCD, a badge, two more keys, or even a key and knob combo. This is all while making it still ANSI compliant, which means my ANSI only tie-out set can fit perfectly fine. Going through the sides, we see a float-like design with the underglow LEDs flanking the middle. This makes the whole board easier to lift off from the table, even though it's sporting a hefty weight of 3.6 kilograms. To the rear, we see the USB Type-C in the middle, and to the back, we see the external weight as well as the rubber feet which are inspired by GN Works adhesive blast feet. A quick note of mine is that while the proto units have this tiny LED accent in the front, the retail units will have a telescope badge in place of that. As for the build quality, I have no complaints. The vibrancy of the coating here is great and I've got no scuff marks nor dings even on the proto. Speaking of colors, the board is up and grouped by now with tons of colors to choose from. Besides the e-coat I have here, you could also get the SE version with the anodized finishing as well. This board will set you back 179 for the wired only version, 205 for the EE version, and 235 for the special editions, a fair price for what you're getting. Moving on over the specs and features of this board, let's quickly build this up in preparation for the Grand Lasson. I've chosen to build this all foamed up and foamless for you to hear. The build is quick and straightforward, just like any zoom board, so I'll be skipping majority of the instructions here as Meltrix will have a much more thorough guide on this. Let me just tell you what components I chose and why I picked them. For switches, I went in with my favorite broken-in MX Browns that were lubed and filmed and spring swapped as well. And as I only have 90 pieces, I figured I'd put my Gatron oranges into the mix as they mimic Browns about 50% of the way there. For plates, it's supplied with the standard PC plate but I might join the group by just to get an FR4 or an alu plate for that extra reverb and stiffness. My first build is all foamed up, so I added in all the foams, the batteries, and internal and external weight. And finally, for the keycaps, I've chosen Keybox as new JC Studio keycaps in the violet rune colorway, and I think it perfectly matches my board quite nice. I'll be using this set more in the future, but for now, there's a link in the description if you want to get a hold of one. With all that out of the way, Please enjoy the sound test. Foamed up, it sounds like any other foam board. But I love how the MX Browns differentiates its sound profile, even with the PE foam installed.
foamless, I feel that the alpas are a tad bit muted while the spacebar slaps. Maybe taping up the flex cuts would make it much better, but hey, it does give the bounciest and plexiest experience. Let's just see what people think of it later on the meetup. Taking this off the checklist, the PCB is offered with a flex cut and non flex cut version, and both single mode and tri mode versions. The tri mode of which has Bluetooth and the 2.4 GHz dongle. It supports multiple layouts, including split space bars, step cups lock, and split shift keys, not to mention ISO enter. This is what other companies need to do offer more customizability in the layout. This preference on the layout aren't even preferences at all. They're a requirement for other languages like the ISO Enter. And I'm glad that even their hot swap offerings has this catered for. Besides that, it's your standard affair of BIA compatibility and features that make the board stand out like the 2U LCD. Overall, a well thought out and complete package. As for the plate and mounting, I feel like a broken record here, but it's the same gasket mounting system found on the zooms starting with the TKL. I hope in the future, they included another plate as standard, as well as having the option for top mount would be great to open up more possibilities of mounting in the future. For now, the gasket mount is still great and ensures that the PCB and plate are isolated to the gaskets from the case. Nothing out of the ordinary here. I'll quickly touch on the stabs as I was thoroughly impressed. A dab of Crytox and I was done with no retuning at all. Such a great departure from the old WS tabs. And this is the part you've been waiting for. I brought the Zoom 98 and all of my other Zooms to TGL, the Grand Lasson, the biggest mech meetup in the world. We had our own booth with RX-03, Mega Keys, and Toki Doki. And the majority of the audience we had looked at and admired the Zoom 98. They got to try out the phoneless config with MX Browns. And aside from changing sides from hating to liking the MX Browns, they also noted that the board is heavy to carry around, which is to be expected. Some also like the dog on the LCD, a fun quirk in my opinion, that will let newcomers get hooked in the endless possibilities the LCD could give. But one did raise a good question out of all of them. Would I rather have this or the Zoom 75 and Zoom Pad combo? For me, it all comes down to preference. Even though the combo would be better in terms of space saving and practicality, you'll still need two USB cables to plug it in, and the cost of the two outweighs the cost of a single Zoom 98 alone. Like I said in the Moskik review, I don't use the numpad quite often, but I do get the appeal for other users. At the end of the day, it's up to your personal preference on which one to pick. Overall, the Zoom 98 is still a great entry level to meet their custom keyboard for the price. While it didn't innovate any way further from the previous layouts, it brings with it the Zoom 75 features and Zoom Pad into one whole deal, and I think that's a nice addition to the Zoom family. If you're looking for this layout, I think this with all the added features brings more value to the table than the budget offerings from Monskik and Keychron. So these are my thoughts for the Zoom 98. How about you? What do you think of the Zoom 98? Let me know down below. I'm Johan JP Maba, and I'll see you in the next video.